In the 39th century, humanity discovered the Ood, enslaved them, and used them to perform menial tasks throughout the three galaxies of the second great and bountiful human empire. The external hindbrain of the Ood was extracted by Ood operations and replaced with their translator globes. With their connection to the Ood brain severed, they followed the orders of humans. Ood operations kept this procedure a secret from the rest of humanity, spreading the belief that the Ood were naturally servile and offered themselves for servitude. TV. Planet of the Ood. One Ood slave ended up wandering callous and fell under the master's influence, delivering a phone to people he wanted to communicate with in the colony. A group of Ood were bought by Martin and Cassandra King and smuggled onto Callus to work in the Sueño mine. The Ood's sanity were affected by the Sueño, resulting in one having to be shot. When the colonists began turning against the mine, a few Ood were lynched. Audio. Call for the dead. The Ood continued working in the mine after the master helped the kings by giving them telepathic inhibitor to protect them from the Sueño's influence. Audio. The glittering prize. The master put the Ood under his influence, preventing them helping Cassandra when Governor Terraman's forces invaded, and later ordered them to kill everyone in the colony. Audio. Sins of the Father. One Ood was bought prior to the hindbrain operation by the Lesser Order of Oberon. They did the operation themselves and brutally trained the Ood into an assassin. He eventually killed the entire guild, Audio, the Mines of Magnox, and began working by himself, under the name Brian until an encounter with the Eighth Doctor on Athana resulted in him falling into the Time Vortex. Audio. He kills me, he kills me not. After a nudge by the Tenth Doctor's TARDIS, prose, what the TARDIS thought of, Time Lord Victorious, he ended up in the Dark Times and became a key player in the escalating Kotoru Crisis. Prose. The Night, the Fool and the Dead, all flesh is grass, by the 42nd century, it was claimed that every human had an Ood servant. They were generally barely even regarded as being alive, and were considered to be expendable. Despite this, an activist group, the Friends of the Ood lobbied for the cause of their freedom. TV. The Impossible Planet. Jack Harkness refused to keep an Ood at this time as he claimed he didn't like having servants. Audio. The Torchwood Archive. In 43K 2.1, the Ood were being used for menial labor on Sanctuary Base 6 on Crop Tour. The Ood knew of prophecies regarding the beast, which the Walker expedition would later discover. W.C. Tardisode 8, Tardisode 9, TV, The Impossible Planet, the beast possessed the Ood, and made them into his, legion, in order to besiege the human party of the expedition. TV, The Impossible Planet, they were defeated when Danny Bartik, the expedition member in charge of them, broadcast a telepathic flare which reduced their field to basic zero. This created a brainstorm, which caused them to collapse. However, their telepathic field began to reassert itself after a time. When the Tenth Doctor broke the gravity field that kept Crop Tor in orbit around the black hole K37 Gem 5, the Doctor was only able to make a single trip in the TARDIS to rescue Ida Scott from suffocation. He was unable to save any of the Ood on the base, who had just been freed of the beast's control. All perished but were given posthumous honors. TV. The Satan Pit.